Welcome back. Well, Mission San Juan Capistrano always has something going on year round, but this time they have a new program for Christmas, and I have Michelle Lawrence Adams here who's going to tell us about the new program. Well, welcome. Thank you for letting me join you today. I'm really excited to talk about Capistrano Lights, which is a new addition to the mission at San Juan Capistrano. Right, right, and I know we're going to talk about that in just a bit. So tell me, tell me a little about yourself. I mean, 15, 16 years at the mission. I was, I was kidding you that they're going to have a statue, you know, of you there because you've been there so long. Well, if there's any statue, it should always be to the volunteers and the people <laughs> that serve, and I appreciate that. Um, I'm a daughter of Orange County. I grew up in Santa Ana and Seal Beach, and I'm a proud a former city planner and city government employee. I've worked for such cities as Seal Beach the city of Laguna Niguel and San Juan Capistrano and I never thought I would end up in nonprofit but I had the great privilege and honor to be invited to be the executive director right. 15 years ago and it was been a wonderful experience a lot of work and a great team effort and in that I'm also a mother and I'm, my husband is Joe Adams he's the president of Discovery Cube Foundation oh, okay. on the 5 freeway and so the two of us really live our lives around the idea of service and nonprofit stewardship. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Well, very good. And tell me a little bit about the mission overview. You know, I know it provides a lot of things year round for children, families, adults, but just kind of a brief overview of what, what, what is going on there. Well, the mission's amazing because it's just a historic California landmark that could either be dusty or enlivened. And the way that we like to implement it every day is as a place of inspiration, education, and preservation. So on one day you can come in and see the garden and they're beautiful, take a docent guided tour, take a audio tour, and now we're going to have five languages. So you can do that, the cultural experience, or you can do an art tour. We have a koi fish that fill our beautiful fountains, the historic Sarah Chapel, which is the most historically mm -hmm. significant chapel in the state of California, right. which has gone through a $1.8 million restoration effort, is worth seeing. Then we have cultural events and mm -hmm. art exhibits and as you know, we have concert series in the summer right. and festivals all year long. And Native American programming that teaches about the builders of the mission, which we're really proud of. Right. And, and one thing I love about uh, the mission itself is it always has beautiful foliage and, you know, whatever whatever the season is, there's always something to look at. And you have little tags and names of, of some of those, right? Well, we have a, a, a garden tour that happens okay. every Wednesday, free with admission. And we have 40 or so wonderful gardening angels, we call them. They come in and an amazing team on Wednesdays and help out and maintain the lush gardens. And then we have a contract service, too, that's highly committed. So the combination of the professional tree and lawn maintenance and then also the volunteers just give you what you've got. And I think the juxtaposition of the beautiful living against the decay of the architecture really creates a sense of place. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can see a beautiful garden, you can see an old building, but when you see what is old and what is new next to each other, there is some sort of um, evo evocation of feeling and inspiration in yourself. Well, it's just a beautiful location, no matter mm -hmm. what time of day you go or year round, you know, whenever you go. Um, but keeping that all up costs a lot of money. Sure does. The I mission was founded in the 18th century, right, right, right. same year as our country, which is amazing on parallel tracks. Here's the United States and here's Spain territory, and eventually it all becomes one. I think that's an amazing experience to know right. that we're, we're taking care of a property that parallels the United States history. I think also um, in the maintenance of it is that we're 100% independent. We don't receive any church or state funding. So the folks that pay at the gate or join in our membership program are wonderful stewards in helping mm -hmm. us to provide this access. Mm -hmm. And one thing that people don't really realize is there's a side component of the mission, and I would call that hope. And people come in and they kind of have low expectations for a California landmark. But once they come on the grounds and they see the gardens and they see the architecture and the people that serve there, they want to come back. And that's why we have over 10,000 membership households today, right. which help to keep the mission maintained and help to keep it open seven days a week. Because the hope part is those people that are suffering from cancer or terminal illness or difficulty in their lives can come to the Sarah Chapel and head to St. Peregrine Chapel, who is the patron saint of the cancer sufferers. And you would be amazed probably every day, myself or others, see people coming in that are facing really difficult times in their lives. Mm -hmm. And they head straight to the chapel regardless of their faith tradition. Right. And they sit there and they write in their prayer book and they have their red candles. And so I think that we're also providing a service in addition to the education and the cultural arts programming and the sense of connection between generations, grandparents to grandchildren mm -hmm. and, and all everything in between. 
I think the sense of hope is something that often isn't explained or understood until you get on the property. Right, right. Okay, so let's talk about some of those uh, events that you do have coming up. You have a brand new Christmas program. Let's talk about that. Well, this Saturday, I'm real excited. Uh, Christmas at the Mission has been a long program at the Mission where we've had an open house format. And last few years, we added snow. And that took all of our focus on making sure that nobody got hurt in the snow. So it kind of took away the meaning of what we're all there for. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of reimagined this event. And the first thing we did was we received an estate gift from someone who wanted their life to do something in a gift that would make the mission even more special. And mm -hmm. so in talking about what that would be, we thought, what if we reimagined Christmas at the mission and had a, our own Christmas tree? And so right now there's a 30 foot Christmas tree being installed in the ruins of the Great Stone Church. Folks can drive by and check it out. Mm -hmm. It's going up live as we speak. And there's a 10 foot wreath that's going up in the courtyard where people will be able to take pictures next to this LED lit wreath. But Christmas at the Mission will have a musical program that goes with our tree lighting. Mm -hmm. And Saturday night, we're sold out. All the tickets are gone. And that has a lot of things going on. Music, cookies, Santa, Santa Claus's wife, the whole thing. But after that, December 2nd through January 6th, Capistrano Lights is ushered in. And anybody who's on the grounds before five o'clock, either with a same day journal mission ticket or a membership pass or a comp ticket or a volunteer can come right in or they can pay, mm -hmm. but they just have to be on the grounds before five o'clock. And there'll be a four song musical and light program on this tree. Oh. And they can stand around and do community carols every night, except for Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, and New Year's Eve. Okay. The tree will still go on, but we're right. not open, so they right. can watch from the wall. But it'll be a wonderful experience of bringing our community together in a new tradition that will end on the Epiphany, January 6th. Okay. And we hope that people will come and join us for Capistrano Lights. Well, it sounds beautiful. It's and it sounds like there's going to be a lot of different things going on. I can imagine it must look gorgeous Well, the front too. courtyard of the mission will be white lights. Okay. So it'll be like heaven when you come in. Oh. And then when you get to the central courtyard, as you pass the sign that says resurgum or renewal, which we hope all people have a sense of when they come to the mission, it'll be all colored lights. Kind of like when the Wizard of Oz movie goes into color. Mm -hmm. We want people to have an experience in their life where they continue to be surprised and mm -hmm. continue to connect to the mission. It sounds beautiful. And then also, of course, the uh, famous Return of the Swallows celebration is March. Give us a glimpse of what that's like. Oh, the Swallows are part of our identity, and we owe Mr. Rock and Robin writer Leon René from the 1930s a great debt of gratitude because he gave this mission its only theme song, you know, when the Swallows come back to Capistrano. There's no mission in California that has that, and there are 21 missions. So we celebrate the return of the Swallows and the tradition of their renewal around the spring period time, which is March 19th every year, which is also in the liturgical Catholic calendar, St. Joseph's Day. Mm -hmm. So we have sort of two things going on in one big celebration. And no matter what day of the week, whether it's a Tuesday or a Saturday, we give the community this wonderful collection of dance and food and mm -hmm. experience celebrating California and mission history. Then the following Saturday, the town has a parade every mm -hmm. Saturday that follows St. Joseph's Day. And that's the large non-motorized parade in California. And that's put on by us, the city and the Fiesta Association in um, San Juan Capistrano. And it's just a great tradition. But all year long, we celebrate those swallows. And then they leave in October, which is on St. John of Capistrano Feast Day. Mm -hmm. And the bells ring also on that day. Right. Well, again, you have so many things going on. now. Um, I have tried to get in on some of your activities for the future, but they do sell out pretty fast. So what would you recommend that people do? Well, the number one thing to getting into the mission for any event is making sure you're a member, okay. or at least you know a member, okay. because it's all about serving those that support the mission. All right. And that's something that you can get on our website or at the gate. Okay. A membership gives you the opportunity to have a discount in the store, and you get the newsletter, and you're in the loop. And because we have programs all year long, starting with sort of St. Joseph's Day and March going through Mariachi Festival, which is an amazing community festival. We're always sold out. Then the five summer concerts, then our weekend Native American programming that happens all year long with Jackie Nunez to our lecture program, mm -hmm. all the way to Christmas at the Mission and Capistrano Lights. Mm -hmm. For your 40 to $60, you have an opportunity to really enjoy that experience. Right. Right. Well, excellent. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate all the information. It's a lot. And it is a lot, but you know, your your program starts uh, this upcoming weekend. Right. And then from then on, they can always go see all the beautiful lights. We hope that this is just the beginning for Ca Christmas at the Mission Capstone Lights. And every year we'll just be ringing out the mission to the heavens and everybody will appreciate that. I like that, mission to the heavens. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you again. Thank you for having me today. You're welcome.
All right, and don't forget that uh, this weekend starts the Christmas lights at the Mission of San Juan Capistrano. We'll be right back after this. Mm -hmm.